Welcome and thank you for joining us in this lecture. In this first lesson, you'll learn how to navigate Jupyter Notebooks, execute code, run magic commands with the percent sign operator, and visualize data on Google Collab with Matplotlib. Let's start by familiarizing ourselves with one of the main tools for data scientists and machine learning developers around the globe today, Jupyter Notebooks. More specifically, Notebooks inside of Google Collab. A Jupyter Notebook is a development environment where you are able to execute code in cells. More thoroughly, a notebook integrates code and its output into a single document that combines visualizations, narrative text, mathematical equations, and other rich media. The Jupyter Notebook is a powerful tool for interactively developing and presenting data science projects. Different programming languages can be used within Jupyter Notebooks. Our focus here is on Python. A Jupyter Notebook is a front-end that allows for new modes of interaction with Python. It is an interface that allows you to execute Python and IPython commands in each input cell just like you would at the IPython terminal or Qt console. You can also save an entire session as a document in a file with the IPynB extension. This creates a file that describes the contents of your notebook in a format called JSON. The document you are reading right now is precisely an example of one such notebook, and we will show you here how to best use this new interface. The first thing to understand is that a notebook consists of a sequence of cells that contain either text, such as this first one, or code, such as the second one. As you can see, we can simply write Python code on the cells. First, declare a variable x and assign it to 0. Then we increment x by 1 and we try to get the return value for x. Let's run the cell. And there you go. As you can see, get 1. You can also write functions as you normally would in Python. Let's create a function called square number that receives a value x and returns x times x. Let's call the function with the number 5. There we go, 25. Once the function is defined, you can call it on the same cell as we did here or on other cells. Let's call the square number of 8 in the cell below. There we have it, 64. There are also multiple ways to execute code. You could call the function by itself, as seen above, or you could also assign the results to a variable and simply type the variable name. Let's create a variable called 7 squared and let it receive the square number of 7. And let's get the return value for 7 squared, which is 49. You could also use the variable in other ways, such as printing it like you would in a Python file. Let's call the function print on the variable 7 squared. It returns 49 as well. It's good to note that if you press Ctrl plus Enter while the cell is selected, it will be executed in place. As you can see, the same cell is still selected. But if you press Shift plus Enter, the next cell will be selected after execution. If there are no cells left, a new one will be created. This is very helpful, as you'll be executing multiple cells in a row a lot of the time. So, as I press Shift plus Enter, the next cell is now selected. We are also able to import Python libraries, just like so. Import NumPy as NP. Now we have all the functionality of NumPy at our command. Let's print a few mathematical constants and trigonometric functions. First, pi, then Euler's number, then the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. There we have it. Pi, Euler's number, and the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle. Collab notebooks usually come pre-installed with data science libraries. But if you ever need to install another one or select the exact version of a library, you can do so by using the exclamation point command. Exclamation point pip install numpy double equal and the version you want. 
In our case, pip is already installed, so the requirement is already satisfied. But if you try to install another library, you'll be able to do it with this command. Now for magic functions. The IPython magic functions are a set of commands that live in a namespace separate from your normal Python variables and provide a more command-like interface. Similarly to the exclamation point we used in the previous cell, cell magic functions execute IPython commands in the cells, this time with the percent sign and the name of the function. Let's try to use the timeit magic function on the range function with the number 5. There we have it, it takes 186 ns per loop. Line magics can also be used inside code blocks, it doesn't have to be at the start of the cell. Let's create the loop for i in range 3, the size is i times 5, and we print the size, then we take the time it takes to run the range for that size. The first one is 161, then 199, then 196. Magics can do anything they want with their input, so it doesn't have to be valid Python. Let's do some bash commands. There we have it. Another interesting cell magic is the ability to create any file you want locally from the notebook. Let's use the cell magic write file test.txt to create a text file in the notebook. Now we have a text file with this written on it. We can even open it inside the cells using the exclamation point cat command and the name of the file. Now we are able to read the contents of the file inside of a cell. On the tab to your left, if you select files, you can now find it there. As you can see, test.txt is a file. You can download it, rename it, and do anything you want with it. Let's use this opportunity to talk about the interface around you. Once you open an existing notebook, like this one, or you create a new one, you are in the main notebook interface, which consists of the main editing area, where the cells are contained, as well as a collapsible left, left panel, and a header area at the top. The left panel contains many useful functions. Let's re take a look at the first selection. It shows the table of contents. This is great for navigating code directly to the areas of interest in your notebook. The second section lets you search more precisely for what you're looking for and even replace the search prompt with a new desired text or code. The third tab is all about code snippets. When you are able to search for common tasks usually performed on notebooks and insert them directly into your notebook. The fourth tab shows the variables and some information about them. This is great for debugging. The final tab is the one I showed you before. It shows the files menu where you can upload, download, move and rename files. You can also open and access your Google Drive from this menu, as well as directly executing it from the code cells. Now for the header bar. There are many useful functions on the header but they are pretty much self-explanatory. I suggest you look through them to see if you want to use them. One interesting function to note is the change runtime type function. As you can see, we are not using any hardware accelerators, but if you're running code that requires a lot of processing power, such, such as the training of a machine learning model, it's better to use a more intensive hardware accelerator, such as a GPU or a TPU. Today we will not be using that, so I'm just going to cancel. Let's talk a bit about visualizations right now. Matplotlib is a great library for visualizing data. We can use it on notebooks with the magic function percent sign matplotlib. Let's call percent sign matplotlib inline, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, then we can create some sample data. Using NumPy, we get a line space from 0 to 10, the sign and consigne of this line space, then we plot it, showing the radians, the value, and the sign and consigne. There we have it. 
the values, the radians, the sine and cosine. Thank you so much for watching. Today we have learned how to execute code on Jupyter Notebook cells and navigate its header and panels. We have also learned how to run magic commands with the percent sign operator and even how to visualize data with matplotlib. Hope to see you on the next one.